What's up everyone, welcome back to Just Finish Coding. This is part 7 of our full Pygame course on Python, so let's get coding. Just finished coding. Now quick interjection here, if you've not watched parts 1 to 6, please watch them before you come here because we're picking up from where we left off and you'll be very lost. I'll leave a card for you right here. Please watch the videos and then come right back. If you're still here, I'm going to assume that you've watched parts 1 to 6, in which case your game should look something like mine. And although it kind of works with our bullet collisions and all of that, things are still pretty horrible because we don't really even have a timer set up and things go on indefinitely. And also the collisions play no role. So there's still a lot of work to do. So head over to your code. And the first thing I'm going to do is to scroll down to the game variables and make a few more. The first one is going to be called max, max time, okay? And this is going to hold like the maximum amount of time there is at the, and this is going to be like at the beginning of every single level. So that time is going to be in my case about 40. And what I'm going to do is to make sure that there's some kind of event that happens once every second and that event decreases our timer. And to do that, what we need is something called a user event. So I'm going to say timer is equal to p dot user event. Okay. And you don't have to put in anything after this. Uh, just leave it like this. Now we can have a timer set based on this particular event. So I'm going to say p dot time dot timer. Okay. Uh, dot set timer. I'm sorry, not just timer dot set timer. And like, as you can see right here, we need an event and we need a milliseconds where we want to change this timer. So if I wanted to have this timer uh, happen once every millisecond, then I would put, have to put in one as my second parameter. So what I'm going to do in my case is for the event, I'm going to say timer and for the milliseconds, um, thousand milliseconds is one second. So that's what my timer is going to be. And now I'm going to have another variable, which is going to be called timer sec. Okay. And this is going to hold the current like where the timer is every single time. Okay. And initially, since we're starting uh, at a brand new level, this is going to be max time, uh, but it will keep changing later on. So now you can scroll down below. And since we have a custom event block, we should be able to detect it right here. So now after the quit event, I'm going to check for like the timer event. So I'm going to say if event dot type is equal equal to timer. Well, in this case, what I'm going to do is to subtract the timer by one. So I'm going to say timer sec, um, or actually I'll check for another condition. I'll check if timer sec is uh, greater than or less than zero. So I'm going to say if timer sec is greater than zero, in this case, I can subtract the time. So I'm going to say timer sec minus one. Okay. And that is pretty much going to be it. So now this obvious not timer dot sec, just timer underscore sec. Okay. Anyway, there we go. And uh, after this, we need to like print out to the screen, not to the console, but the screen, like our timer is this much. And you might remember that from our game initially. And to do that, we need to have a font and a text. So I'm going to scroll back right up and then I'm going to make a font. So right here, that's why I'm going to do it. So right here, I'm going to create a new font and I'm going to call the font timer underscore font. Okay. And uh, how you create a font is like this, pygame.sysfont.sysfont, okay? And once you have this, now you can type in three values inside. So first you have to type in the name of the font and this font needs to be something that is stored in your computer. So what I mean is that if you go to Microsoft Word, for example, and look at all the fonts, you should be able to see a whole bunch of fonts. And all those fonts are saved on your computer. And right here, you can enter in any one of those. So the font I'm going to enter in is going to be called Comic Sans, which you probably know pretty well. And after this, I need to type in the size of the font. I'm going to go ahead with 30. And after this, I have to type in whether the font should be in bold, uh, which I'm going to say yes. So to type in yes, you need to say true. And uh, italics is by default going to be false. So I'm going to leave it as it is. Now this is just a font and um, we are not going to blit a font by itself, but some text which is based on that font. And uh, to do that, uh, you need to have another text variable. So timer dot, uh, timer underscore text is what I'm going to have as my uh, variable. And I'm going to say pygame dot font 
dot uh, not font actually uh, time of font okay or actually not just time of font I'm just going to say time of font okay dot render okay and this is going to um, basically um, uh, how do I explain it? Just similar to how Word does, it's just going to have like your text in that particular font, okay? And right here, you can see that we have to have a text and the text that I'm gonna type in is going to be, um, I'm going to say seconds left, okay? And I'm gonna leave in a colon after that followed by a space, okay? And after this, I'm gonna add in by a string concatenation, the string of a uh, timer sec. And this is going to be my text. After this, I'm just going to type in a one for I believe the anti-aliasing. And after this, we need to type in a color. Just don't worry about like that one right there, just type it in. Now, as far as the color is concerned, I'm gonna uh, put in a red color for the font. And I'm just going to type in red. And then uh, within my colors, I'm gonna say red is equal to, and in our case, that's gonna be RGB is going to be 255, zero, zero, okay? and that is red and this would have your font as a text. Now this is just once again a text and what we really need to do is to print it onto the screen or in our case just blit it. So scroll down uh, below to your events and after this uh, timer second, here's what you need to do. First within, your, um, within this if statement, you need to copy paste that exact same code which we did right here, okay? And the reason we do this is because we need to constantly keep changing the timer text because our timer set keeps changing. And this just happens once, so we need to do it every single time that our timer changes. So right here, just paste that. And after that, you can go to your redraw game window function right here, and you can blit the text. So what I'm gonna do is to say win dot blit and I'm gonna follow this up with the uh, with the text which I need to blit, which is timer text, I believe. And uh, after that, I'm going to put in the X value and the Y value. Now, as far as the Y value is concerned, I'm just gonna have like that, uh, have that about 10 pixels below. Um, for the X value, I'm gonna go ahead with um, X val, okay, X underscore val, minus about like 220. That's what I'm gonna go with. And uh, I'm gonna test this out right now. And uh, after I press the A key, this should begin working. And you can see, there we are. So the seconds keeps going down and everything works pretty nicely. Now there are obviously some upgrades that we need to make with our zombies and so forth. But since our timer works properly, I'm gonna leave that for now. And let's get into making up the different levels of the game. As far as our level is concerned, things are going to be extremely simple. So it's just that when the time is zero, we're gonna like increment the level. And apart from that, we're just going to blit it onto the screen. So what I'm going to do is to make a new font and this is going to be called level font, okay? And this is going to have pretty much the exact same code as this, uh, but I'm going to go ahead with a new font and I'm going to go ahead with Arial. One of the least like fonts in my opinion, but I think it looked pretty good, so uh, let's do it. So Arial and uh, I'm going to go ahead with a size of 60 and once again, I'm going to set it to be bold. Now I use the timer text right here just so that um, you know, for a single event, uh, the time is going to display like as 40 and then go down to 39. But as far as uh, as far as our level font is concerned, uh, things are going to be one for quite some time. So I'm going to leave it as it is and just get down into our code. So uh, right here, after the um, after the entire like event um, event log right here after the timer event, what I'm going to do is to have in like a simple um, text right here. So I'm going to say um, not timer text, I'm going to go ahead and say level text, level underscore text is equal to level uh, level font dot render and I'm going to follow up uh, that with pretty much the exact same thing. So I'm going to say um, in our case level is um, followed by colon and now I'm going to concatenate to this uh, the level and I know we don't have a level just as yet but just hold on, um, concatenating level followed by a one. And then after that, what I'm gonna do is to just type in this, cyan underscore blue. And this is probably guessed it another color, which we we're gonna be declaring uh, up here. So now within our game variables, I'm gonna declare level as well when we scroll up. Yep, here we go. Our level is equal to one. And uh, uh, within our colors, I'm gonna type in cyan underscore blue is going to be equal to 
and cyan blue is just a combination of green and blue. So that's 0, 255 uh, and 255. That's the RGB value. So now this is not going to split to the screen just as yet. So we need to uh, scroll down below to our redraw game function or our redraw game screen right here. And in addition to blitting our timer text, I'm also going to blit the uh, level text. So I'm going to type in level text. Um, and I'm going to follow that up with an X value of, uh, I guess like 15 and a Y value of 10. That's going to be my level. Now, since the level is going to be one, this should be pretty easy to test out. And uh, it seems to be like there's some kind of a bug. And that's probably because I just concatenated level instead of string level. So I'm going to scroll down to my code and fix that right here. And um, where's that? All right, here, there we go. So I'm going to say string of level and not just level and this should fix it. So now when we run our code, no, most likely no errors. So I'm going to press the A key to begin. And uh, yep, there we go. The level is way too big. So I'm going to uh, make it a little bit smaller. I think I messed up the fonts where I had like the level up thing confused with just level. So I'm going to go ahead with 30 for level as well. Okay, so not 60, but 30. All right, there we go. Let's run it once again. And this should be pretty much it. So perfect. You can see that the level shows up and that is pretty great. If you've enjoyed this video, please make sure you leave a like and also don't forget to subscribe and turn on the notification bell. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.